So we've considered endogenous factors, the, the genetic factors in the causing of disease. We now want to think about the exogenous factors. These are factors that affect the individual from the environment. Environmental factors that can alter the physiology to become pathophysiology or alter the anatomy to become pathology causing the individual to not be at ease anymore, causing dis-ease. So we want to think about exogenous factors now. Those which arise from outside of the individual. Exogenous etiological factors. And maybe a very obvious one to start with is infection. We live in a complete milieu of uh, microbiology in us, on us, there's more bacterial cells in and on human beings than there are cells of the body and uh, there are no sterile environments on earth. The, the nearest large sterile environment is, is the moon. Um, everywhere on the earth there's microorganisms. So there can be uh, viral infections, there can be uh, bacterial infections, Important to know which is which, of course, because viral infections don't respond to antibiotics, whereas bacterial infections often do respond to antibiotics. Or there can be bigger organisms called protozoa. These are the amoeba type organisms that can cause dysentery, for example. So viral infections, influenza, viral hepatitis, the common cold, bacterial infections, M many bacterial infections, um, wound infections, streptococcal, staphylococcal infections, um, tuberculosis. Most, most pneumonia is caused by bacteria, but pneumonia can be viral as well. Um, so th these different things can cause, oh, parasites of course. Worm infections, helmetic infections and prions. Prions stand for protein, it's like an acronym, proteinaceous infectious particles, thing, causing things like Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, spongiform encephalopathy. Fortunately, they're fairly rare. Most of the infections we see, of course, are viral and then bacterial. They're, 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 these are the common causes of infection. But can you see the infection arises from outside the organism? That's the point I'm trying to make at the moment. So microorganisms. Uh, another cause of disease, of course, is uh, chemical toxins. You know, we are biochemical systems and many chemicals can interfere with those. Um, numerous chemicals can affect our physiology. Cyanide you might think of, quite a famous one from literature and movies. People can take cyanide and it kills you very quickly. That inhibits the energy generation inside cells, actually. Uh, mercury and lead, the heavy metals, um, very toxic. Can affect the brain and the bones. Dioxins can cause um, cancers and mut mutations in cells. And of course, chemicals affecting locally in the skin or the eyes. So we could divide that into local and systemic, as we often do. But chemical toxins are another cause of endogenous diseases. And then we can think about uh, physical agents. So physical agents, we can be thinking about, um, well, trauma. Um, any form of energy that goes through the body that uh, is in excess. Kinetic energy will cause trauma, disrupting the integrity of the tissues. Heat and cold we could include there. Electrical energy, if we get electrocuted. We could include radiation there as well, actually, because radiation can lead to the um, mutations which can lead to can lead to uh, cancers. So you can see we've got, if you want to add these, we've got all these subdivisions here. If you want to make up a nice big mind map, we could add those to physical agents. Um, nutrition. Uh, 
abnormal nu nutrition is called malnutrition. And uh, some people can have too much of something. Or of course there can be not enough of nutrients. So malnutrition can be too much or, or not enough. So malnutrition just means abnormal nutrition. So if more energy is consumed, for example, than, than we need, um, that can result in obesity. And uh, excessive eating of some foods has been associated with vascular disease, hypertension, heart disease, stroke, diabetes, mellitus, some cancers. So certainly lots of diseases that can be caused by too much nutrition. That's, uh, that's certainly true. But of course, deficiencies, not enough food, can also lead to malnutrition. So you might think of um, quashia core caused by lack of protein resulting in edema or marasmus caused by lack of carbohydrate or fat deficiencies. Fat deficiencies often lead to not enough uh, fat soluble vitamins, the ADEC, A, D, E and K vitamins. Actually, very often these things, when it's not enough, they, they go together and we call it PEM. Protein energy malnutrition often goes together. But we could also think of lack of fibre in the diet, which associated with uh, lack of fibres associated with constipation and uh, hemorrhoids, that's piles. Uh, diverticulitis, colon cancer have been associated with lack of fibre. Iron deficiency, anemia, scurvy, lack of vitamin C, the, the list goes on for not enough, um, not enough nutrients. So malnutrition is another, is another one. Now, another group of causes is um, disorders of immunity. And again, here with immunity, it's quite possible to think of uh, immunity where there's not enough immunity or too much. Now, what do, we, what do we mean by this? Well, not enough immunity is going to lead to immunosuppression, immunocompromise, uh, where a person is predisposed to infection. You might think of human immunodeficiency syndrome, for example, caused by the um, um, acquired immune deficiency syndrome caused by the AIDS virus, the HIV virus. Human immunodeficiency leading to death from actual uh, infections. But there can also be too much, can also be too much immunity. So we could think about, um, that could be autoimmunity. Or hypersensitivities. So autoimmunity is where the body attacks its own tissues. So for example, um, diabetes type 1, um, where the body attacks its own beta cells leading to insulin deficiency um, or autoimmune diseases multiple sclerosis now is, is believed to be an autoimmune disease uh, lupus systemic lupus erythematosus is autoimmune motor neuron disease may turn out to be autoimmune um, rheumatoid arthritis there's lots of autoimmune diseases where tragically the body is attacking its own tissues but hypersensitivity is where there's too much immunity that uh, can lead to allergic reactions for example so there can be a, an anaphylaxis a life-threatening allergic reaction and uh, all allergies are overall really quite um, quite common unfortunately we have lots of allergies so that, that, that is uh, not enough activity of the immune system leading to immunosuppression, too much activity of the immune system leading to autoimmune diseases and hypersensitivity, hypersensitivity reactions. Um, what else could we think about? Oh, well, I mean, a whole class of diseases. I'm going to imagine this line goes over here now. Uh, degenerative diseases. Degenerative, many, many degenerative diseases. Uh, and these are associated with increasing age. They're really a complication of the deterioration of tissues that occurs with increasing age. There's different views on that. I mean, different, different 
causes. For example, cells are only able to divide a limited number of times. So after a limited number of cell divisions, the cells aren't going to keep dividing properly. Therefore, the tissue will deteriorate in, in quality. And there's going to be wear and tear. So cancers, for example, can be... Uh, most cancers are, are more common in older people because of the accumulation of degenerative mutations. Um, articular cartilage wear and tear there can give rise to osteoarthritis, painful joints. Um, loss of brain cells can lead to dementia. Parkinson's disease is caused by loss of cells which produce dopamine. And in the elderly there can be atrophy and degeneration of several organs leading to what we sometimes call senile multiple pathology. So things that tend to become more common with, with age not necessarily associated with age. For example, joint trauma can lead to um, osteoarthritis in relatively early life, but it's associated with wear and tear. So um, degenerative diseases. And, and probably linked in, well not linked in, but a separate one could be uh, neoplasm. Neoplasm. Now neoplasm is, neo means new, plasm is tissue. So neoplastic disease, and this is what we're thinking about when we're talking about uh, when we're talking about cancers. So um, viruses, radiation, chemical carcinogens can affect the genetic material leading to mutations, and that can give rise to neoplasms. I mean, when we're learning, basically, there's two things we need to know: benign and uh, malignant. And it's important because benign growths, benign neoplasms don't spread apart from locally, whereas malignant ones do spread around the body. They can metastasize around the body. So um, malignant disease or benign, but both neoplastic. Just trying to think of other classifications of, of disease really I mean thinking about broad groupings of diseases of course within these that there's thousands of different diseases but uh, we, we could have a psychosomatic here as a as a group psychosomatic diseases I mean psych means mind and soma means body so th these are the interactions between the mind and the body psychosomatic so the, the, the psych, the mind, can affect the body and the body can affect the mind. It's a two-way process. Psychosomatic. So obviously stress is the mind can affect the body, causing stress-related conditions. But of course it's obvious the body can affect the mind in many ways. Um, you might think of a patient who becomes septic and delirious, for example. The, the brain can only work properly in a, in a healthily functioning body. We normally use psychosomatic to indicate that it's the mind affecting the, um, the body, actually. I mean, this is, what, this is the basis of placebo. The placebo effect is really quite amazing when you start looking into it. The placebo effect is a beneficial effect that your patient receives because they believe in you and they believe in the treatment. There's also a converse psychosomatic effect called the nocebo. And that means that if the patient believes that harm is done to them, harm may actually come about. It's, um, it's a bit frightening. It just shows the importance of the patient believing in you and your therapeutic abilities. Another group we could talk about are uh, psychiatric disorders. Psychiatric disease. Now, typically, we've divided this into two groups. Typically, we're psychotic, or the, the 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 psychoses, the psychotic conditions, or the neuroses, neurotic or psychotic. Um, traditionally, we've said that psychosis is when the um, the condition arises within the mind, whereas neurotic is more affected by the environment. So, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, paranoid psychosis are going to be psychotic. I think of these more as caused by biochemical disorders in the mind, but, but there again, neurotic conditions can be as well. So the anxiety and the depression, and the, 
the stress related conditions that unfortunately are just um, so common in, in, in everyday life. Now just to include a couple other main causes here, uh, another one I like to talk about is the uh, iatrogenic. Iatros is the Greek word for doctor, genic is beginning, so iat iatrogenic disorders are caused by medical treatment. So if you put a patient to bed, don't look after their pressure sores, they develop pressure sores. That's iatrogenic because it's a side effect of your treatment. Or the side effects of drugs, antibiotics can cause diarrhea, steroids can cause osteoporosis, morphine can cause respiratory depression. So uh, uh, surgery can damage nerves or damage lymphatics. These are iatrogenic, things caused by treatment and unfortunately there's a lot of those. Um, some diseases as described as idiopathic. An idiopathic disease means we really don't know what causes it. So if someone says the etiology of this condition is primarily et et uh, idiopathic, it means they don't really know. So this idiopathic disease, it just seems to arise for some reason. Motor neuron disease, when some people get that and some not. Sometimes it can be genetic, but very often it's just sporadic and idiopathic. We don't know why it's come about. And of course, many conditions are multifactorial. Multifactorial, multi, many many factors, multifactorial. So many of these things working together. But it's worth thinking about, is this disease caused by infection, chemical toxins, physical agents, malnutrition, immunity? Is it iatrogenic, is it idiopathic? Is it degenerative, is it neoplastic, is it psychosomatic? And uh, how do these factors work together? How is it multifactorial? So they were the, well, very quick, <laughs> whiz down of the uh, exogenous causes of disease. So we looked at the endogenous, which were the genetic, and the exogenous, which were things from the person's environment. And of course, part of what we do is we try to improve the environment and we try to improve the people's knowledge of their environment so we can moderate that environment to prevent disease because any etiological factor we know about, then at least we have the possibility of preventing disease caused by that etiological factor. And of course, prevention is always better than cure. So that's a rough overview. There are videos that, where we look in this in much more detail, but if you want to, a brief overview, hopefully that has provided that into the cause of disease.